Last week on the Rough Draft Diaries, we begin part one of our two-part holiday special investigating and experiencing the world of Charles Dickens and his 1843 publication, A Christmas Carol. In the previous episode, we focused mainly on Dickens' past, his need to write in order to stay away from debtor's prison, in which his family had been sent before, and the circumstances surrounding the creation of his highly popular yet not financially successful holiday novel. This week, we'll focus on the characters and the themes within A Christmas Carol. And the best place to start is with the description Dickens offers his readers. Scrooge, a squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner, hard and sharp as flint, from which no steel had ever struck out a generous fire. That's Jane Ebersol. She's a volunteer at the Mazza Museum, which features original artwork from children's book illustrators. Now, I tried to hunt down a copy of the original illustrations created by John Leach, but turns out they're extremely rare. But Mazza Museum did have an original print of Trina Schertheimann's artwork from a 1983 publication of A Christmas Carol. So you can see people preparing for feasts, going into a grocer's, but then you also have Scrooge over here who's looking out and is looks like he is on his last dime, and yet we know he has lots of money. And here's one of our Christmas ghosts peering over his shoulder, almost as if he's trying to thrust him out into the public. It's a beautiful pen and ink drawing that captures the mood and character of the novel perfectly. And I wish I could capture the full story of A Christmas Carol within this one episode of the Rough Draft Diaries, but I don't think I'll have enough time. For now, we'll just talk about a few characters that help create the main themes throughout the novel. And we'll return to Dr. Gregory, English professor at UT, for her commentary on one of the most important moments in the book. The emotional core of the book is, is I think for me and for many readers, is the Cratchit family, right? This highly sentimental representation of these people who are on the brink of real destitution, but who still manage to stick together as a family, to behave in a loving way toward each other, to be generous and sharing and to care. Dickens wants us to sympathize with that family, right? He wants to create an emotional reaction in his readers. And I think that's one of the reasons he gives us the figure of Tiny Tim, because it's not enough to just present people as as poor. (laughs) He wants to kind of up the ante, right, with Tiny Tim and um, present him as sort of physically vulnerable um, and disabled and, and possibly dying. It's fairly easy when remembering our previous episode, the one describing Dickens' upbringing, to see the similarity between the Cratchits and the Dickenses. One could easily be the inspiration for the other, a family barely able to stay afloat, to keep out of debtor's prison, and to remain together, not separated. It's also interesting then to think of Scrooge, the antagonist to the Cratchits, and to compare him with a young Dickens. Young Scrooge has had a lonely and unhappy childhood, and his aspiration for money stems from his need to avoid poverty, which he finds embarrassing. It's not hard to imagine this character is Dickens essentially reliving his fears about himself and his future. So Dickens is the Cratchits, but he is also Scrooge. And the most important part of this discovery is to see how Dickens responds in the book to the moral and financial crises these characters find themselves in. In in A Christmas Carol, he suggests that we act as individual, right? That individual acts of philanthropy will generally um, be enough to address those problems. He doesn't necessarily extend the critique. Although he does have Scrooge raise Bob Cratchit's salary, which is, I think, a, a more of a, a kind of political statement in some ways even than his buying the turkey. Because that's, I mean, that's, a, that's potentially a one-time deal, right? You can always buy someone a turkey, just as we can always drop off some cans of food, right, and feel like we've done our, our duty. But the long-term solution to getting the Cratchits out of poverty is that he actually needs to make more money. And Dickens recognizes that. So through A Christmas Carol, Dickens is able to achieve two things. He's able to broadcast his social concerns about poverty and injustice. And two, hopefully igniting a concern within the public about the world around them. It's a concern Dr. Gregory hopes continues on for the readers experiencing this book in today's day and age. I think we're currently living in a society that has many of the same economic and social problems. Today we call it food insecurity, but it's hunger and we have hunger and we have starvation. We have severe 
poverty and all of the studies suggest that the gap between rich and poor is getting wider and wider and wider. And the question of sympathy is also highly relevant. Dickens really does want us to see the Cratchits and to be moved by their plight and to do something. <laughs> and even if that something in A Christmas Carol is as simple or as an individualized as just one person and an act of benevolence, it's still something. And one of the things that I, at least I think I worry about with our own culture is, you know, is there a point at which sometimes we look at something and we feel no sympathy? And I know there have been some studies which suggest that a kind of absence of emotional response. So yeah, I would say that in that sense, A Christmas Carol, to me, feels highly relevant. And what about you, dear listener, as we wrap up this episode and this year? What do you think of A Christmas Carol and the world that surrounds it and the world that we live in today? Are you concerned? Are you happy? Are you sympathetic? And if you are not, how will you respond to that? Good questions to ask as we finish up again this holiday special here on the RDD. I'm Haley Taylor, and thanks so much for tuning in to the very last episode of the year and the very last episode on Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol.